Straight out of Compton, original streets Grew up with the lion, see what the criminals see Now he a giant and a pivotal key Got it down to a science, this the visual streets He came up with bullet, he came up with turtle Live life to the fullest, he put it all in the journal We dodging them bullets, we jumping them hurdles It's the hood postman, we in the streets universal uh. For the postman, Professor Billy Mayo. This is not a glorification or a glamorization. This is an education. You can go anywhere in the world and get a couple of lives, but you come right here to get your treats. Be sure to click the notification bell, like, subscribe, and share, drop a comment down below. So when the dope content hit, it'll feel like it's the first and the 15th. Lock the door. Lock the door. Professor Billy Mayo, the Hood Postman, back with Body. Body, on your paperwork, it alleged that you were for the leader. How did that come about? Well, the guy signed the 5K1 against me, which I said in the past video, is when you cooperate with the government. <laughs> oh, gosh. And you know what? Matter of fact, Melly Mel, and I don't care if you read his name, the highlighted blue up under this, right there. Who does it say was the leader? But a snitch said? Brian Berkeley. What does a snitch say? Uh, Berkeley was arrested on, on, on Beach Avenue House where he lived and talked on the telephone to law enforcement on the day of the robbery. There was clothing taken from the house, which is linked to Berkeley and dried packages of stains on it. Dried, I guess that's the dye pack. Right? Yeah. Dye pack stains on it. McDowell incriminated Berkeley in all of his statements. McDowell said Berkeley was the leader. Thank you, Connie. And I bust him out of my sentence and transcripts, Jason Matthew uh -huh. McDowell. Did you ever run across any of these guys while you were in? No, I didn't, but Jason Matthew McDowell was sent up top. That means PC'd up in Phoenix. And the other guy was sent up top in uh, Herlong. That's the name of that prison. Okay. Okay. Talk to me about Bloody Blowmont. Bloody Bo How did he get the name Bloody Beaumont? And you know, Beaumont was a different place. We couldn't wear boots on the yard. But the staff said, if you have to do a removal, as they call it these days, do it in front of the chow hall, wear your boots and stump them out. So they stumped dudes out in front of the chow hall every time a bus came, man. It was crazy, man. Yet it got the name of Bloody Beaumont because the FCI was buck wild. The FCI was dudes that had 30, 40, 50 years. There were a lot of first termers from different states. And they were with the business because 30, 40 years in the feds, man, that means you're going to do... 35, 36 years, 28, 27 years. When you hit it, you are like Buddy Blowmont. How soon should you have that knife ready in, ready in your hand, ready to go? Well, fortunately for me, when I hit Beaumont, they already knew I was coming. And my reputation in the Federal Bureau of Prisons had preceded me. Mm -hmm. So I had a knife waiting on me. And I accepted the knife, but I declined any authority position until I was able to present my paperwork. I'm still, it doesn't matter how long I've been down. I got to Beaumont in 2016 and I've been down 13 years by then. So that was the protocol on that particular yard? That was a requirement. I don't care who you are, how your reputation is, where you from. You hit a new yard, bring that paperwork. It's a difference if you're in California because we bounced from if we went to yard to yard because we already, you know, know the business about individual. Right. What happens to dudes when they try to manipulate or circumvent the system or 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 the, the way you guys like to flow, right? In the USPs. When you find out that a guy tried to circumvent that, I mean, what happens to that individual when you when they catch up to them? Get rid of them in the most vicious way. See, what I love about the Compton car, because we have different cars in the pen, we didn't give our homeboys no pass. It was no amendments. It was no making it good. It was none of that with us. It was ain't nobody above the law, no matter who you are from Compton or Watts. If you ain't right, we're getting rid of you. So there was no selective politics? Not with us. I can't speak on other cars. I can only speak on the car I'm from. What do you think Crip Mac is going to be up against if he hit a place like Bloody Blow Mob <sighs> and any other, like Big Sandy and some of the other big ones? Well, if he hits 
a big Sandy. He's going to have to put in work. If he hit Beaumont, because there's a lot of cats from out of town, he's going to have a celebrity status. As long as he doesn't run his mouth and understands that certain federal joints, it's no fist fight. How is that tattoo going to weigh in to his circumstances? It's going to ostracize him from different homies within the car. I remember one time at USP Victorville, we had some guys come down to the uh, chapel and we had them take their shirts off. And we looked at all tattoos to see if it was any C blanks on it. And any that had C blanks, they had to cover it up or we were going to get rid of them. And I can roll call who was there at that meeting because I was there. Mm -hmm. Don Juan from Santana Block was there. K Head from 1180s Coast was there. Ed Dog from Marvin Gangster was there. Myself, I was there. D Lope from West Side Gangsters out of Bakersfield was there. We were there. Blackwood from uh, Hometown, home, 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 hometown, yeah. And what year was that? 2012 at USP Victorville. 2013 USP Victorville. 2012-2013. What factors do you believe that contribute to this type of uh way of living in, in the USPs in the penitentiary? Because I want to distinguish the difference between the US penitentiaries, in other words, USPs and state joints. How how do they compare or, how, or do they compare at all? Because I've been around, I've done a lot of state time, C49623. Uh, my personal perspective, the USPs are the most dangerous prisons in the world. Why? You will lose your life like that. 98% of the guys in the USPs have been told on. If you have any inclination of being no good, they're going to sniff you out, find you, and do diligence in that paperwork. It's dangerous in the USPs. There are no guns in the building. You can lose your life quicker than you can blink. How are the DC boys in there? DC boys? <laughs> wow. I often said this. The reason we clash for so many years is because they're just like Crips. You give us an inch, we take it a mile. If you allow a crypt to say to you, man, shut that shit up, and you don't respond, we'll run over you. I'm not talking about sexually. I'm just saying we'll run over you. DC boys, if you allow a DC boy to say a certain thing to you, it's over. He's going to push the limit. How do we address some of the undenying issues with being in prison when it comes to our people? I'm talking about the the... Because everybody is not the same, right? There's people that are strong. There's people that's, that push knives. There's people that are just actually just scared to death. What do, how, do you, how do you define it or how do you protect your car when you find a person that's less than worthy? But they haven't snitched. They haven't told him. He's anybody. our buster. And can't nobody else call him a buster. Okay, He's our it. buster. Yet... You know what I, in retrospect, what you just said, man, what I mean, just, just going down memory lane. I used to wonder when I was in the USPs, why are these dudes so scared? The dudes that were scared. And it didn't dawn on me that, dude, you grew up and became, for lack of better words, a sociopath with the firearm, the knives in prison and so forth. So this was like second nature to you being a chameleon and adapting to this environment. So... I didn't understand it until I got degrees in social behavior science and things like that. Yet I didn't understand how how can you be scared a bunch of around a bunch of dudes that can do the same thing to you that you can do to them. I don't understand the dudes that got pressed. Right, an open plea is often referred to as a dummy plea. Extremely dummy. Explain to us why. Open plea is, let's say you have zero to fifteen on an open plea. Zero years to fifteen years. Zero means we'll give you probation if you're the judge, right? In the, the probation department. Say that judge had an argument with his wife last night. Say that judge, son, daughter, niece, nephew or something got robbed or assaulted by someone that's affiliated. And he's going to sentence that person today. It's at his discretion to hit you with the zero to 15. 
Say that judge didn't get no nookie this morning and he wanted something from the young girl he got on the side. So he doesn't have to justify on what he's going to sentence you to. So it's a dummy plea. You rolled in the dice. So what holds their feet, their feet to the fire? I didn't hear you. What holds their feet to the fire in regards to sentencing? There's, yeah. There's another way to get sentenced. Yeah. Which is like I had 11C1CAC, which is a binding plea between you and a district attorney. It runs everything down that you're copying to. You're not going to incriminate no one. I got my sentence. I got my uh, plea agreement right there. I made them put co known and unknown co conspirators in mine. No names. I refuse to sign anything with anyone's names in it. So you have a bargaining chip because 98% of the feds are what, Mel? You know it. What? Cut, 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 convictions. 98% of convictions. You're absolutely correct. I thought it was. Me, myself, I think it's even higher than that. 99.9? <laughs> Shout out to the main streets, beat the feds. I was, thinking, time. I was thinking about what you were saying. At the same time, I'm saying 98%, man. I, 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 I seen the whole time I was in there, I saw one guy actually beat him. And he beat him on technicalities based on the illegal search. And they holding him in a hot car over two hours. Why they could, could search his car four or five times. Now, do you understand why I said shout out to the main streets who beat him? Yes. And stood solid. Yes. Them the only people I know that went all the way to the box and beat him. Right. And, and, and that's, and, and you're right, that's got to be, that's not easy, to, bro. Man. It's just, it just don't happen, you know, because they, they, you know, because. The feds they have, have unlimited resources. Exactly. Their budget is just unlimited. And if they really, really, really want you, they're going to have you they're going to have for you, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Exactly. You know, so I, I like I said, man, I was this is what I loved about USP excuse me, USP Victorville. Uh -huh. I don't love prison. I'm not saying that. I'm saying about solidifying the character of the individuals around you in, from our former lifestyle. The guy that read the paperwork, if the guy he read the paperwork gonna slip through, guess what? He had to go to. Wow. I'm gonna say this, right off, and I think this is important too. We have to architect our lives around people we love, and we have to be aware of the now keyboard gangsters, other words, the the guys that's on the internet that has anonymity and they have this thing that where you don't know who they are, but yet they talking. I think what's happening now, and, and you, you can follow me on it or not, is that the internet, being strong or having strength with the internet is no longer important because yeah. of the internet, because the internet allow people to talk to you in any kind of way and you may not be able to find them talk to them, address them but you know they're they're weaklings or whatever or, and, and I'm talking about these dudes can just say the most ridiculous stuff and never be held accountable for it. Now we can jump back to when you said about certain things in individual cars mm -hmm. that's our buster. You can't call them a buster right? So a lot of these dudes would be on the internet they they own hood busters. Uh -huh. But now they probably don't even go around their hood and they talk about reptiles from their neighborhoods and align themselves with outsiders from their neighborhood. This is all over the internet. How can I be from Carver Park and then be speaking ill on a Carver Park with an adversary of Carver Park? That make it make sense as the generation now say. So so the internet has destroyed a lot of things, man. A dude could say a million things about you or I on the internet and we can't even. Why are we going to defend ourselves? We don't need to defend ourselves. No. But but the, the the reaction to it is what is expected. And when you ignore it, it's other people who don't know our former lifestyles that take it as gospel. The thing about it, the keyboard games is for in the real world, their words hold no weight. Only in virtual reality are their actions heard or seen. And we have to choose to be just leaders and not followers. And we just got to continue to lead our life that leads to to the things that we want and the things that we need to acquire to sustain a happy life. We can't get too overly excited about about the internet. Right now there's there's a enormous lot of people that's 
that's living in virtual reality and they're living into uh in the matrix you, and, you know what i like what you said about the keyboard gangsters a keyboard keyboard mm -hmm. you know i see never mind but <laughs> y'all said no no because that's what they are and i go i go disparage nobody preferences mm -hmm. but the, the keyboard gangsters man it's like this man everybody knows me all the people that see me out in the public say man you bright d you this that another what is my signature mark man Compton from head to toe, wherever Compton I go. Compton from head to toe, wherever you go. Whenever you see me at functions and we run across each other and other people have seen me at functions, what do I always got on? Compton gear. Do you really think our city is going to allow someone to advocate for our city on the level that I do on the transformation from legendary guy in the streets? And I'm going to say, yes, I'm a street legend from Compton to a community activist advocate for our city if they wasn't correct. So anybody in their right mind, would they ever want to go to bloody Beaumont? I don't think so. I hated it. I, I, I hated it with a passion, man. And I hate all prisons, but I, I hated that one extremely hard. Lock the door uh, on that. Cali Miners, baby. <laughs> Proof of grind all the time. Music money. Got a dollar sign. Hub City. I'm a street nigga, streets fuck with me I'ma keep pushing products to the fans, get me It's Guap off top, Diamond Cordier That nigga wall won't give a pro bitch the time of day They see me climbing, they see me, they see me shining they see me. That's hard work, hard work, proof of grinding New money got me tipping in at 550 I leave bad man and I'm so pretty I got that check with me, that's my hate Sprayer. Go big, grind now, nigga, play later What can I say? I'm addicted 